Thank you very much, Adam, for speaking to our group. Gosh, well, thanks for having me and thanks for such a lovely introduction. Um, it's great to be here. I'm glad we can uh, do this over Zoom, uh, despite the, what's going on in the world. And uh, I'll just hop right in, uh, in terms of talking about bright spots and landmines and some of the ways I think about this now. Um, the book was published four years ago, and so um, my thinking has changed in certain places and, and is similar in other places, and so I think you'll, you'll get a flavor of that. Um, these are the kind of nice logos to denote these. I, I'm a very graphical person, so that definitely helps. Um, and I think a, a good place to start when I, when I think about this um, approach to diabetes is, you know, looking at a 24-hour chart of, of CGM, this is some of my own data. And, you know, I, I think it's interesting if, if you just take a look at this chart and you ask, and I asked you, you know, tell me a story about these 24 hours of diabetes. Like what, what do you think happened on these 24 hours? Um, what, what could be learned? What might I change? Um, obviously this is devoid of any contextual information, but that's typically how we kind of deal with our information in diabetes. And so if, you know, just take a second and kind of look at this chart and I don't know, make some guesses. What do you think, what do you think kind of happened here? Um, and as a provider, you know, if you, if you saw a patient and they came in with this kind of chart, what would you, where would you focus? Where would you kind of put your eyes on? Uh, you know, and I, I think a lot of us are drawn to things that look different. <laughs> and so in this case, you know, there's this huge blood sugar spike in the middle of the day. And I think that's a very natural place to start. You know, we're, we're, we're helpers. We want to help. We want to fix things. And so it's pretty tempting to say like, hey, look at that. There's a, there's a diabetes landmine right there in, in the middle of the day. And let's do something about that. And so I think these are questions that we're all very uh, accustomed to asking, that are common to ask, um, especially in medical settings, which is, you know, what is wrong and how do I fix it? So, you know, what, what decisions do I make that explode into these out of range blood sugars? That's kind of a good summary of what a diabetes landmine is. You know, when I have a challenging day, like what are some of the things that happen on that day? Uh, what choices do I make? choices that I might regret or, or um, that bring on negative feelings. And when I think about diabetes landmines, I'm thinking like, how can I stumble on fewer of them? You know, how can I, how can I have fewer of them happen each day? And I think CGM is very well designed for diabetes landmines because it alarms you exactly when you've stepped on one. And I think what, um, when you look back at this chart, I think what, what can easily get missed is the, you know, 22 hours of bright spots on this particular day, which is what's working and how do I do more of that stuff? So there are, there is quite a large portion of this day where my blood sugar was in range. And that's interesting information too, because it, it could be an indication of things that work that I might want to replicate. And so these are kind of the converse of the other questions, which is what's going well that I should keep doing? What should I do more of that works? When I have a great day with diabetes, um, you know, my blood sugar is in range. It's um, diabetes isn't taking over my life. What happens? Like what, what can I learn from those kinds of days? Um, especially in terms of food, what foods seem to keep me in range? Uh, also mentally, like when I'm in a more positive frame of mind, what is enabling that? And how can I do more of that stuff each day? Um, and so if, if we go back to this chart, uh, what is the actual story of this day? Um, so the actual story is that this was a pretty uh, bright spot filled day. So my average blood sugar was 117, my time in range was 87%. And I, I believe that's a metric for um, time in 70 to 140, so an even tighter range. Um, I actually took a two hour bike ride on this particular day and it was around that time span where you see that spike. Um, I don't know why that spike happened. Maybe it was an infusion set thing. Maybe it was adrenaline. Maybe I um, ate a little bit too much before my ride. Who knows what it was? Um, doesn't really matter. Um, what matters to me is that I actually took action on the data. Um, I stuck to the eating plan, which I'll describe in a bit. 
you know, I waited to eat um, until after my blood sugar started dropping. I got enough sleep. I meditated in the morning, took a two hour bike ride. I mean, I, I think I did a lot of things right on this particular day. And yet it is very tempting to just look at the spike in the middle of the day and say like, but if it only weren't for that spike or I need to fix that spike or something. So I think this is kind of an interesting demonstration of this, this pull to fix things versus the um, recognition that there are a lot of things that, that might be going well that I could be missing in, in that problem solving, if I only think about problem solving. Um, and I think, I think, you know, if we kind of think about the relative size of things and how they weigh in our mind, um, I think often diabetes landmines can kind of dominate our thinking. And what I kind of advocate is like, let's, let's try to be a bit more balanced. Like what, what is working? How can we do more of that stuff? And what is, what is not working and how can we kind of minimize it? And, and maybe, who knows, maybe there's a way to even look, kind of put extra emphasis or focus on the things that are working. Um, even if they're small, even if it's, hey, you showed up for your appointment. Hey, you wore your CGM um, every day of the past month. I mean, this doesn't have to be really incredible, um, miraculous things that are happening. Um, this is a different way that I've been kind of mulling over bright spots and landmines. I think it puts it in a more time and range context, which can be helpful for some people, especially people new to CGM. So um, I'll just explain it. This is another way of thinking about bright spots and landmines. And sometimes I often think about um, those of us living with diabetes. I mean, our, our goal is to keep the car on the road. And by car, I mean, you know, keep my blood sugar in range, stay between the lines. Um, and so that graphic might look something like this. You know, you've got your 70 to 180 is kind of the, the range that's recommended. And, you know, I want to keep, keep my blood sugar on the road, keep my car in between the lines. And bright spots are about asking what keeps me on the road and how can I do more of that stuff? And again, I don't think this is an intuitive or obvious question that we often think to ask, but to me, it's a pretty important one to, to bring to the surface um, because I'm not intuitively thinking of asking that all the time. And in um, the book that I wrote, I, I focus on food, mindset, exercise, and sleep. Um, of course, there are, you know, medication would be in there, glucose monitoring would be in there uh, as well, um, as well as other things. But I think, I think those four categories are, are really big ones and good to focus on. And, you know, something that I find really interesting is what enables cruise control, which, which is a way of saying, what allows me to stay on the road with less driving effort? Because if something keeps me in range and is less diabetes burden, that, that's probably something I'm gonna be likely to stick to because it's got that kind of double benefit. And so I'm really interested in bright spots that are kind of cruise control um, enabling. And then diabetes landmines are about this kind of off-roading into the desert. So what are the things that drive me off-road? And ideally, as we kind of look back at those things, how might I prevent that off-roading from occurring? And inevitably, off-roading is going to happen because of just the complexity of this disease. And so when that does happen, how can I get back on the road quickly? How can I recover and kind of get back to the way I'm driving? And then there's this really interesting related category that I call extreme off-roading, which is not only am I off the road, but I'm so far out in the desert that um, diabetes is, is kind of running my life. And it's it's so um, much burden in the moment. And also it's gonna take me a really, a much longer time to get back onto the road. And I think this is an important category because maybe there are ways to build guardrails such that it's hard to get that far off the road. It, it's, it's actually a kind of preventative measure to, to kind of stay closer to the in-range road uh, that we're interested in. Um, so that's, that's kind of bright spots and landmines in a more, in a metaphorical context and also a time and range context that I find kind of helpful for explaining to people. Um, even those new to diabetes, I think can kind of readily grasp this um, idea. 
And you'll notice in this metaphor, I, I think where glucose monitoring fits in is it is like the windshield on the car or like a GPS. Glucose monitoring, whether it's a, a meter or a CGM, just gives you a sense of where you're at on the road. And that's incredibly helpful. And of course, the more data we have, the clearer the windshield or the better the GPS. So CGM is, is of course gonna make me a better driver because um, I just have more, I have more looks out the windshield. Like every five minutes, I get to kind of see where I'm at versus, you know, finger sticks. If I'm, even if I'm taking, you know, eight finger sticks a day, um, I just am not getting as many snapshots to kind of see where I'm at on the road and, and take action on it. So um, that's kind of how glucose monitoring layers in there. And I often think of, you know, the different foods we eat or exercise or sleep as, as kind of moves on the steering wheel, you know, depending on what food I eat, it might be kind of a small turn of the steering wheel, or if I eat something, you know, really high glycemic, lots of carbs at one time, it's going to be a really big turn of the steering wheel. And um, yeah, I'm a big fan of this metaphor. Uh, I'd be curious to get your feedback on, on whether you think it's helpful. Um, but that's kind of another way of thinking about bright spots and landmines. And of course, um, I added this slide this morning because I was thinking, you know, diabetes is not a straight road. And I think that is something else that makes it really hard. I mean, most, uh, lot, you know, our lives change all the time. Uh, every day can be a little bit different, um, especially for reasons I'll get into in diabetes. And so how do we stay on the road when the road is super windy and mountain and a mountain pass? Um, that I think is um, one of the things that makes living with this disease so hard is that it's not a straight road for the most part. Um, and often when the road is the windiest is when we need, when we have the least amount of time to focus on diabetes because we're so focused on, on other things in life. So um, this is a different metaphor that I think is helpful for glucose monitoring. So, you know, we, we might say like the microscope really revolutionized biology and helped us study what is happening in cells and the telescope you know, revolutionized astronomy and helped us figure out what was happening in the skies. And I think CGM is that for diabetes. It's, it's this microscope, telescope ability to kind of use an instrument to figure out what's happening and, and, and do things about it. Um, and I really like this quote. It's, it's from a, a show about Einstein's life. And I, I don't think Einstein actually said this quote, but it is in the show. Um, and it's this idea that tools don't make discoveries, people do. And to me, this is where we have to marry CGM data or glucose meter data with actually expertise of, of people about their lives and our expertise as helpers. How do we make discoveries using the tools of CGM and actually do something with the data? And I, I think when I think about bright spots and landmines, I, I think it's about marrying data with expertise and actionable changes um, in terms of what to do more of or what to, or what to do less of. Um, so in the book, there are 43 bright spots and 16 landmines. That's pretty intentional because again, I think we tend to ignore the bright spots, the things that work. And I'll say that, um, you know, th this is not a checklist of things that people should do to have a great life with diabetes. It's just a checklist. Uh, it's, it's just a collection. It's a collection of things that work for me. And I don't do all of these things every day, but I felt like it's nice to have a, the biggest possible toolbox in diabetes. And so um, I think a lot of this book is trying to share um, all of the tools I found helpful at different stages of my life with diabetes, such that it, it can help folks, um, you know, apply those tools to their lives, tinker with the tools, or or actually do the opposite of, of what I share if it if that works for them. Um, and I think that's really core to the approach is people are the experts on themselves. And now that we have CGM or with finger sticks, um, we can test things and see if they work for people. And if they don't, we can kind of go back to the drawing board and figure out what does work. Um, the book is free. Uh, that's intentional because, um, you know, I did it in my um, spare time and we launched it on Diatribe. And I thought, you know, my goal here is to get it to as many people as possible. So it's free to download there. The audiobook is free on YouTube. On Amazon, it's $6, which is the cost pricing. So we, uh, Diatribe and I don't make any uh, revenue off of that. And we just want it to be accessible.
Um, you can get on the Diatribe email list at that link. Uh, that's also free. And yeah, just, you know, if I could leave you with two takeaways, I think one is just remember this to not forget about bright spots. You know, everyone has strengths. Everyone has things that are working, even if they're small. And the other is don't forget about how complicated it is to live with this disease and, and um, remind your, your patients of that because I think that can get lost sometimes. Um, you're welcome to email me at this address. I don't check it that often, but I do check it. Um, and yeah, those are the links for Diatribe.